here in Camarillo, California, and we're at the Vitesse headquarters. I'm sitting here with CTO Martin Nuss. Martin, thanks for taking the time today. Glad to have you here. So the industry seems to have reached a tipping point with SDN and NFV. Can you give me a quick overview of, of those and, and why do you think that the industry seems to be driving these new technologies forward? Yeah, soft, SDN, which stands for uh, Software Defined Networking and NFV, Network Function Virtualization, are really about two things. Uh, first is it's actually virtualizing the network, so abstracting the network from the underlying infrastructure. And the second one is actually then making these resources programmable and make them available uh, to software controllers, infrastructure managers, so that actually in a higher layer of software can actually program those network resources. And the goal is really to uh, present the network as a service. And so that multiple applications, multiple services, and actually possibly even multiple service providers can actually use the same underlying network infrastructure and to create new services um, more quickly in, in a more agile way. And uh, the initial focus on motivation to, for service providers to look at SDN and NFV was really um, the the idea that all these different resources could be shared among multiple applications and so on. So really as a uh, reduction of capital ex expenditure because today the network is really very, very differently constructed. Every service actually us usually has its own dedicated equipment and so it becomes very, very cumbersome and glacially slow for a service provider to create a new service, operationalize that service, and then actually get to revenue with that service. In SDN NFV, because it's a programmable infrastructure, because it's a programmable uh, network as a service, now not only can you share the infrastructure, but actually much more importantly, and I think that's where the, where the service providers are focusing on, you can create a new service much faster, much quicker um, in software, and therefore actually improve your top line revenue growth. And that's actually why service provider today is are, are primarily focusing on the benefits of NFV, network function virtualization. Now SDN and NFV are often spoken about in the same breath. Give me the rundown though. What are some of the similarities and what are the differences? The commonality between SDN and NFV are really that both look at the network in an IT model rather than in the traditional network operations model. And the other commonality is also that it's actually about policy-based networking, so essentially programming the network and the network resources in such a way that uh, policies can be met for the service that is actually being created. The differences between NFV and SD SDN are pretty simple. So NFV is really mostly about processing, so processing like in a computer processing. While SDN really focuses on moving packets from point A to point B. And so one is more about the packet processing locally, the other one is about moving packets within a network. Examples would be um, service activation and service creation. Uh, packet processing for the Evolve packet core in LTE wireless networks, uh, uh, content distribution networks for, for video distribution, uh, call setup, video conferencing setup and transcoding, uh, firewalling, applications accelerations. Those are all things that lend themselves to processing functions that can be done in, the, in a computer. The difference in NFV is really that these compute functions, instead of as they traditionally are, created in a box, in a physical box that does these processing functions and you have a different, almost a different box for every application, the idea is to take these processing capabilities and move them into virtual machines inside a server that can now actually reside in a data center. And those data centers may actually not all be centralized, they could be distributed in the network. Some of the, the uh, compute functions could be at the, uh, at the customer prem as well. On the other hand, um, what you actually, how you create a service is you take virtual machines, 
in these distributed uh, uh, servers throughout the network and chain them together to create a new service that can be rolled out. SDN, again, is about moving packets from point A to point B. Um, that's the networking function that in today's network is traditionally done by switches and routers in the network. The only difference here is traditionally those are done by dedicated equipment that also has fairly fixed protocols uh, associated to that and a lot of manual configuration. The idea of SDN is take some of these, these protocols out of the physical boxes and move them into a controller, basically a software uh, controller that has an overall end-to-end -end view of the network and then can therefore program how packets are being moved from A to B to C throughout the network in a, in a programma, programmable way so that it can be changed and recreated as needed by the application. Now specifically, what will it take to really harness the strengths of SDN and NFV? What's required to harness the, the strength of SDN and NFV and actually realize it in, in a real network um, are two things. If you actually want something that's programmable, you actually first need to figure out what can be programmed. And you have to create a model around what can be programmed. And so that's what's called a data model. And so once you have that data model, then you can create what's called an applications programming interface, an API, that can actually program those functions. And so those are two critical elements. And what's important for the API is because you're not actually have being typical programming of, of a traditional switch or router involves a lot of manual configurations through uh, protocols that are traditionally called human interface protocols, like um, CLI, command line interface, HTTP, even SNMP is, is largely still a human interface. For, a, um, for SDN to really work with a software-based controller, you actually have to be able to talk to a machine. And so those are called machine-to-machine -machine interface APIs. And they need to be full duplex, which means they need to report back to a piece of software what the state of the network or the network element is, statistics, analytics. And then the, uh, uh, from the top down, the software SDN controller can now program the network element. So it's the data model first, and then a machine-to-machine -machine full duplex API. Let me give you some examples. There's probably some extensions that have to be done in order to model a service end-to-end, -end, which will be required at the end of the day, but I'll just give you Yang as a, as a good data model for, for a network element. And then uh, examples for machine programmable APIs are NetConf, which is XML-based, or JSON RPC, which is a very, very efficient full duplex machine to machine interface. Another data model and API that's often mentioned in the context of SDN is actually OpenFlow. Uh, the problem with OpenFlow is that um, it is a very, very low level abstraction and data model and API um, for for primarily based on forwarding. And uh, that is actually very good and has been used um, effectively in, inside the data center. However, in a service provider environment um, with its rich topology and a lot of the service creation, quality of service requirements, it becomes very inefficient to use OpenFlow as a data model and uh, uh, and API. So these higher level abstraction of the capabilities of, of the network like NetConf and, and JSON RPC become much more, uh, much more efficient in, in the service provider networks. Martin, thank you for having us here. I appreciate you taking the time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Mm -hmm.